Okay, well, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. On today's episode, we're going to be learning how to paint a prickly pear cactus um, off of uh, this reference photo. And um, it'll be a lot more exciting than the reference photo. And we're going to focus in on how to paint the prickly pear, but we're not going to do the whole cactus. We're, we're going to focus in on a paddle and some of the prickly pears just because these are some more of my tutorials that I do for my Patreons that are starting their painting journey. So we don't want to do something that's way too overwhelming. So we just want to have fun. And for people who are experienced painters, there's always something more to learn. Um, whenever you paint different subjects, you kind of push yourself to grow. And I really think... Um, Painting something you wouldn't normally paint like a like a cactus is a good idea. I just gotta get some clean water. So I do these lessons while my kids are at school. And um, so if you're wondering why there's a bit of a mess on my palette, it's because I'm trying to get some of these recordings um, ready for my Patreons um, for, for next month. And um, I have to get them ready in advance because I'm having my parents visit from Canada and I don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, I don't want to worry about having to get these things done while they're here. I just want to hang out with them. So I didn't change the palette paper. So to start off, when I do landscapes, I like to kind of start off with this sort of nice orangey white color. Sometimes I start off, depending on the subject, I'll start off um, with different colors. But for this um, prickly pear, I'm going to get this nice kind of warm, warm white color and I'm painting on and this is also a, a nice thing to do if you're just starting out these are sold at Michael's and I'll put a link in the description but these are canvas pads 10 sheets this is a 9 by 12 I think they're like $6.99 and then I just use some painter's tape because later it gives it a nice frame and you know, you never know. You might paint something you like on one of these, and at least then you can you can put it in a little frame if you like it. So once you get that layer of white, and I put a little bit of transparent uh, red oxide there, um, you just let that dry, and then we'll start the demo.
Okay, so once your surface is dry, um, I cropped this out of all that um, photo there just because, you know, I could do, I could just focus in on one paddle and, um, but, you know, what the heck, we'll draw three of them and then I can kind of go over three different ways I like to color them. And so I'll just start it by, let's get one of my smaller brushes here. And I shouldn't store my brushes in water because that gets them a little bit, the wood can start to split from the brush and they get messy quick. So I'm just gonna start off, I'll use a little bit of this transparent red oxide and you can use a little bit of your, I put out a little bit of this um, liquid medium here, or you can just use some water. Probably water will just be fine. So I'm just gonna use a bit of this red oxide because I kind of like the the color. And I like this color too, because when it, when it shows through here and there, it really, really looks good. Now I think I'll crop my photo I'll kind of do that so there's not the full, you know, three. It'll look a little bit boring if I have those three things like a, look like a snowman or a hand or something. So I'm just going to quickly kind of draw that shape with some of this uh, transparent red oxide. And we got this one coming down here and kind of goes up like that and we got this one over here kind of comes in like that and you got some prickly pears so you with, with these, there's so so many different, you can look up these reference photos. I've got this one, um, I think it was on Pixbay, and they're royalty free. But it's hard to find, and I live around these things. I used to have these in my backyard here. And I've lived in different, different houses that, that I've lived in have different, you know, cactus. So I know what these things are like. And I do have my own reference photos, but I just didn't want to spend the time looking for them because they're they're in files and I'm not the best at organizing stuff like that. So you just kind of draw a few of those little shapes. They don't have to be perfect. Remember, you know, we're not going for hyper realism. We're just having fun painting and you might you know, just have one over here. You don't have to have them all stacked up like that. So, all right, so this is gonna be good. And then you'll have, um, you know, we'll put some detail work and everything in those little, there's some little kind of shapes of this sort of color in there so but I like to do mine kind of more whimsical so I'll, I'll show you how I do that so in this reference photo you can see that the Sun is shining on this so you're getting that real lime green but there's also these ones that have sort of bluey green in the shadows so if I go back to my reference photo you'll see there's all kinds of bluey greens and everything and bluey green shadows and then these kind of more brighter greens. And these fruits, if you look from area to area, some of them are like more of a purpley magenta color. These ones are more of a color I don't, I don't see as often. These are kind of a cat orangey red color. So it's, you're, there's really no, you know, Kind of wrong way to go because they kind of shift colors and those paddles in the winter kind of turn purple. So I like to play around with color when I paint these. I don't paint them like just green. 
as you'll see. So uh, sometimes um, what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of Viridian, Viridian green, and I'm just gonna put it here because this paint don't have a lot of room, and get a little bit of that cad yellow light just to lighten up the green and get you that sort of and then you can add a little dab of orange to it and that'll kind of dull it down a little and if that doesn't work just get some cad uh, transparent red oxide and that'll kind of dull it down and a little more yellow so I might start with some of that just for the edges of that uh, cactus there's sort of a you know kind of a darker green edge there and I'm just gonna put in some of that darker some of those darker values and for this lesson you know I'm really trying to make it keep it simple kind of whimsical and fun. With acrylic, I feel like it's harder to go with, to do those super realism because you can't blend and blend and blend as much. So you kind of, I feel like you can work and just have fun and do other things with acrylic that you can't do with oil, like when you layer and whatnot. So I kind of paint in a, little bit more of a fun fun style when I do acrylic. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it just gives you a different feeling when you're painting in acrylic. So once you get some of the dark um, values in, then you can go and add a little bit of white to that green, that green mix. And you can add some more yellow. Get that lighter paddle color. And I'll have to put some shadow color under those prickly pears. But I'm just going to block in some of that. I'm still using my number six flat brush and these are good for softer surfaces these brushes I get them from Dick Blick they're good for acrylic or oil just kind of working that in there and Just blocking some more of that green. And then I'm going to go in and maybe I'll just leave that brush and I'll go with a little bit of a smaller brush and get some of this dioxazin violet and get a little white in there. And I like to add a little bit of that viridian to that violet color, it kind of grays it down a little. You can even use some of your cactus color to blend it in a bit. And I just like to add a bit of that purple here and there because like I said, at different times of the year, these, these plants do have some real purple that comes out. So kind of add a little bit of that purple to the to the green there just for fun gives a little bit of shape and and then I'm going to block in my prickly pears and I'll use some of this quinacridone red. And I'm just, this is a real simple method of getting that shape. So start with some quinacridone red. 
And if you don't have that, you could use something like alizarin. But this color looks really the way they look in real life, that sort of pinky red color. And we'll get some of those prickly pear fruits in there. And a couple more here. These are such fun um, subjects to paint because of the colors and they're so different. Just continue to block in the basic shape when you block in. And one more here. And this one's kind of the closest one to me, so I don't mind if it's a little bit bigger. And I'll just throw one on here, too, even though the part of the photo I was using didn't have one. I'll just put one there just for the sake of continuation. And then I'm going to get go back now. And you, I've got sap green and viridian. You could use a little sap if you have it just to go in and Put some darker green value underneath where those uh, prickly pears are, just so that you get a little bit of a shadow underneath there. And right where the cactus comes in, too, you could use some sap right in there. So wherever there's that kind of shadow color. And then you can go back and get some of that other green you were using, the viridian, just to sort of blend that in. Because there's a lot of that bluey green in there. So that viridian gives you that kind of cactus green that you want. And then you've got uh, the prickles. So I, I can add a little, what I'll do is we'll add a little bit of the highlight first on the paddles before we go and add any prickles. <laughs> Sounds funny. But I'll just add a little more yellow and viridian green and just sort of work in a little bit of the highlight that you see right where it connects. There's a real kind of bit of light there. So I'll just kind of add that little bit of glowing highlight there. Like that. Add some white in there and just sort of dab a little highlight on this guy here. Maybe a little bit down there. And then I'm gonna, to show those prickles, you gotta get a little bit of that, you know, viridian green. Get out a little sap to it to darken it a little. And just dab a, you don't wanna do every single one, but you wanna show a few of those prickles. So you first put where the prickle, you know, kind of comes out. And then you can, you know, sometimes I'll use my finger here a bit just to soften those marks. And then you can get your, the prickles are actually kind of a light brown. But I, I always just put them on with a bit of this dark green just because it's too hard to see them. And then just make sure you're going in sort of the same direction. Like as you go up, they kind of all go same way. And then just sort of add a few of those and 
little bit here and there. And then we won't add the side ones until after we get some color in the background. So I like to do sunny backgrounds when I paint cactus. So you just get a bigger brush here and go to my sky mixture, which is, you got this cobalt blue. And I'm gonna just traditionally do like the dark to light sky. And so you wanna start off with that cobalt blue and kind of I'm gonna work that down. And I like those little bits of that kind of background showing, but you don't have to leave any. And I'm just gonna get that going down to about, probably about here and then I'll switch to a smaller brush to sort of work in the trans, the transition between the light blue and the dark blue, but this will give it that real cactusy look. Just kind of work that in. I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush here to work in there. Blue. So right about here, I think I'll shift to a lighter blue, so just add a little bit of cobalt with white and start the kind of blending to a bit of that lighter blue. And I sometimes I'll add a little bit of this turquoise in there just because that looks good with the cactus and gives it that sort of Nice look, sunny, sunny, happy look. And you can go with a lighter sky than this. I'm just sort of doing the sky part as an extra just to show you how kind of pretty the cactus can look if you just do a simple, even a simple sky. But if you go to my Instagram, you'll you can check out. I think if you scroll down, I did some real, real whimsical cactus paintings there, and they they really were popular. I just it's sort of such a different. I did them in such a different style that you know I just you only have so much time to paint everything unfortunately. And then I, I, I'm just throwing in a few clouds up here just for fun. Just to give you an idea of how when you start playing with paint, you know, you can get carried away like that. And then I'm going to get my brush. And if you paint over your cactus, like you paint over that with acrylic, just take your brush with some water and you can lift off that color that you got in there. So all right. Okay. And so now we want to get some of those nice sunny highlights on our prickly pear. So I will go back to a smaller brush and just get a little bit of this orange, some of that quinacrinone red, some more orange, and you can go and 
Let's see, we might need to add a little bit of white to that because just to get it to brighten up a little. And you want to just put a little bit of a highlight on those. Get a little more quinacridone red. Just don't cover the whole bottom. If, if the shadow's there, just leave a little bit of that underneath there. And you can take your time and kind of shape them the way you want. You can get some more just orange, I think, would work. I ran out of my expensive golden orange. That's what's wrong here. And I've, so I'm using like a sort of an orange, a cheaper orange I bought from Michaels that I use just if I'm doing a background color. So that's why it's not really getting too bright, but you can, you can add some white and make kind of a pink for the real brightest highlight. Just sort of add that. Just a little dot of that to the, the top of those. Just to give it that brighter kind of highlight. I'll just zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Well, maybe it won't zoom in too well. So now that you got that, um, your acrylic paints, especially because I'm using this, this canvas paper, um, they kind of get a little bit darker as they dry. So you can go back and add some, I'm just going to add some Viridian and white and put in a few bright kind of cool green highlights here just to kind of make them stand out again. Just add a little bit of that. Here and there. And I'll add some of that and make, I'll put a few of those prickles going out into the sky with that light color and a few on the cactus with that lighter green color. Just use the edge of your brush and sort of drag a bit of that in there. Need some lighter prickles there. And then I'll just add back some more of that green make it a little darker in some of that cad yellow and viridian mix. And you just kind of push and pull the you know the different greens and you can add more yellow if it's not yellow kind of that yellowy green. And just kind of work that in there. And then you can do the same with your purples because they kind of went really dark too. You can go back and I'll get a little bit of that dark green on the edge again because it kind of got kind of got erased there. And then add the prickles going off into the background there. And 
and then just sort of you can go back when these dry a bit more and add a bit more of that highlight to the tops of them and then I like to add a little bit more of that purple back on so put a bit more of that purple here and there and just kinda you can keep it in the shadows area if you want but I really like that and so that's the idea you know just have fun with it you know you could do the sky lighter and that would probably make them really pop even more but for this demo I think what we did is we learned how to paint the prickly pear in acrylic and I really enjoyed this lesson and I hope you enjoy it too and if you um, if you have any ideas for future um, tutorial lessons for me just let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button this video will be available on YouTube for a day or so, but then it will go to my Patreon channel. And for $10 a month or $29, you can get all the full lessons. Um, and for $59, you get new lessons each month and all the access to all the old lessons too. So anyways, I had a good time and I hope you have a good time painting this too. And thank you for watching.